Hey, how's it going with redefining? Yeah, I'm just uh, rewriting the dictionary. Aardvark. African anteater with long ears and a snout. Nah. In my first vid, I gave a tool for reducing the pain of negative words and insults that you've been labelled with. Redefine them in a more positive way. And this works well for nouns with backstories that have been applied to groups of people. Another tool is using the positive perspective of the negative adjectives that have been used to describe you. This is nicely illustrated in this picture. Is he a pushover or is he laid back? But both of these are long-term strategies to put you back in control of the labels that have been applied to you. But sometimes an insult, remark or negative tone comes out of nowhere and catches you by surprise and then there's no time for you to put on your tracksuit and do all that definitional gymnastics. You feel hurt and you want to feel better. And here's a tool to get you back in the game. Challenge the person in your mind. Now you may have heard of an ad hominem attack. They litter the comments section of YouTube videos, particularly fitness ones. You know the flavour. Hey bleep, you look like bleep. I'll take advice from someone who doesn't look like bleep. Reply. Ordinarily, this isn't the best line of argument because what you look like and what you know aren't always directly linked. There's application that joins them together. However, if someone's been nasty to you, unleashing an ad hominem attack in your mind can really help things. Yeah, yeah, I do like me some good ad hominem. You start from the position that they're insulting you because of their circumstances, not yours. If you're being bullied or insulted, it can be healthy to dismiss somebody because of their situation, circumstances or physicality, rather than trying to get to grips with the logic of their point of view. Why? Because insults aren't logical. Now, if you're trying to have an intellectual debate, it's not a great idea. But here is the perfect situation for it. It's tailor-made. Remember the saying, don't argue logic with the crazy, drunk or stupid. If someone's being insulting, just pop them in one of those categories. Maybe all three. Then distort their features in your mind as you're remembering them saying their nastiness. Make their faces into a grotesque caricature. Psychology experiments have shown that the human brain gives more credibility to people with symmetrical faces or people that we find more attractive. So if you don't want to believe what the person's saying, distort their face. And I know this isn't PC, but nature isn't. Their lack of symmetry will make them instantly less attractive and therefore less credible. And don't feel too bad about it, because the entertainment industry has been using this for centuries, from Punch and Judy to Spitting Image. Being more biological, logical thought is processed on the left-hand side of the brain, and emotions on the right. Hatred and criticism hurt emotionally, and so creating a logical argument in your mind doesn't make you feel any better. In fact, it's like trying to drench out a fire with petrol. Which any arguing couple can attest to. <laughs> yep, that's what happens when I argue with the missus. Creating an emotionally based argument by putting them down in your mind makes you feel better. But sometimes, just the level of people's negativity and venom can really throw you, and this can help deal with that. When you come to a situation with positivity, and you're met with purposeful and continuous negativity, that's on them, it's not on you. People are shifted by a greater state, so if you meet someone with a low level negativity, and you present a higher positivity, you'll shift them to more positive. But if you meet someone who's seething negativity, your positive state's not going to overcome that. And why would it? Even if you're up at a 10 out of 10 positivity and super strong like Mr. Muscles, to seethe venom and hatred, you not only need to be a 10 out of 10 negativity, you also need that backdated a few years. It's like a blocked toilet. They need dino rod, a specialist with tools. Get out of the way, because it's going to blow. Yeah, but how do they get that way? The same way we all can, by not redefining. Because there's a constant, barely conscious, repeating chatter in our minds all the time. If we let it, it takes what others say and repeats it incessantly. It creates a vortex, a self-sustaining tornado. We keep repeating the same incessant negative thoughts about ourselves and our lives, which distorts our perspective and colours our interactions with others for the worse. This creates worse decisions, which creates a worse environment, which feeds back into the negative thoughts about ourselves. And it doesn't matter what your actual situation is, it only matters what the record is playing in your head. You can live in either of these places and be happy or miserable. 
depends on the record. Now they've let their negative record repeat for so long that it's poisoned them. And like transmitted disease, if you let it, it can poison you too. If you aren't watching and observing your own internal chatter and weeding out the negatives that are passed on to you by others, then the best thing to do when you meet toxic people is run for the hills. But if you can manage your own internal chatter, then it's in your best interest to define yourself. Because in the void of you not doing it, others will. And unless you're very lucky or very careful who you listen to, if you don't monitor it, you're going to end up taking on board negative views of yourself that you'll have to carry around as extra weight. And that's just tiring. And increasing your fitness won't make you less tired. And eating more food won't give you more energy. And increasing your strength won't make you more robust. Although a lot of people train or eat to help their feelings of low self-worth. This requires exercise. The none of your body of your soul. And just like building muscle requires physical training, building a positive self-image requires psychological training. The psychological training helps because you no longer be fighting yourself while you're dealing with others. You're just dealing with others, which is easier. Mental doggy bag time. It's an idea to redefine yourself with your own definitions. Choose positive ways to perceive the adjectives that you describe your own character with. And keep a very close inventory on how you see yourself. And if you're accosted by someone and they catch you off guard with their nastiness or negative comments, then distort their features in your mind or do a really bad impersonation of their voice to cleanse yourself of the damage that they can do. I wish it didn't have to be this way, but forewarned is forearmed, so I hope this helps. Yeah, still think you can do a lot more damage with this. Next in the series, I'm going to talk about a technique that can help you rebuild your self-esteem if it's been eroded away. But in the meantime, think well of yourself. Good to have your comments below. Hit the thumbs up. And if you like my vibe, please subscribe. Whoops.